uh, how to set up a cell starter. Uh, this is part of clean rearing. The, there's a lot of ways to do it. I'm not saying this is the only way, this is just my way. So what, what we're going to try to do is get a whole lot of nurse bees in a well-ventilated box with water, um, nectar, pollen, and then eventually the actual queen cells that we're going to put in after we graft them. So today we're going to go to the bee yard. We're going to start going through hives looking for bees to shake into the starter. That means we got to find a frame of brood, make sure there's no queen on it, and shake it into the box. Um, and we're going to shake them in until we think we have got enough bees to do a good job of raising some queens. <clears throat> now, if there's one step that people mess up the most often, and I was guilty of this when I was learning how to raise queens, and I probably am still guilty of it, is not putting enough bees in the cell starter. You need lots of bees. And what we're shooting for is lots of nurse bees. So as we shake them into the box, often we won't even put the lid on it. We might put it on it now and then, but most of the time it'll be open. And that allows all the field bees to fly home. Because what I really want is a box full of nurse bees. So if you think about this from the point of view of grafting and queen rearing, I want a well-fed queen. So, and I want them to accept my cells. So if I have a whole box full of nurse bees that a few minutes ago were nursing not larvae, they were feeding larvae, their hyperpharyngeal glands are in full gear, making lots of, of food for larvae, and all of a sudden I shake them all in this box and there's no larvae to feed, and then after about an hour and figuring out they don't have a queen, I give them a bunch of queen cells, then they'll jump right on them and start feeding them. That's the plan. Also, the other thing I can use the starter for is to get lots of royal jelly in the larva I'm going to graft, I can put it in that cell starter for just a little while, and then when I take it out, it'll be just flooded with royal jelly because all of these nurse bees were just full of royal jelly and they needed to feed something. So they'll feed that larva and then I can graft it easier and it'll have more food when I graft it. So that's what we're gonna do next. So the first thing I do when you go in a bee yard is light a smoker. I'm not going to get into the whole discussion on smoker. That's a whole other uh, presentation. But um, I use an insert. Makes it pretty easy to light. Uh, this is just made from a soup can here. Uh, usually in Nebraska, there's a breeze. I can set it right here, and the breeze will get it going, and then I can pick it up and stick it in here whenever I, I'm ready to smoke. So now that we got a smoker lit. The things we need in the cell starter, we need water, we need uh, pollen, and we need nectar. Um, the bees, in order to produce food and in order to digest food, need water just like you do. So if they've got honey and water, then they can digest the honey. If they've only got honey, they may not be able to digest it. The other thing is they need water to stay cool. So we're going to take some sponges. These have some bees on them from last time. We're going to take these sponges and uh, dip them in this bucket and put them in the cell starter. So I want them nice and soaked up. So uh, I'm going to get a stick and put them under there for me. Hive tool. Plenty of water. If the weather stays cool, I'd like to leave them confined in here for 48 hours. If the weather's not cool, we'll just do it for 24. But either way, they need the water. So it's all nice and soaked. I'm not going to wring them out at all. I'm just going to put them on the bottom. box here is from Better Bees. You can make one out of a nuke box, but this is a well-designed one. It's got lots of ventilation at the bottom. Got this is all screen here. Screen here. It's got a nice slip-on lid that slides in this groove that's pretty bee-proof, so if you wanted to brush all the bees off, put this in your basement. You won't have bees escaping. 
which I've had that problem before on a hot day I decided to put it in a nice cool basement which is a good plan but when bees are escaping the people in the house tend to get excited so um, this is a nice light on lid it's got a couple of cross pieces down inside here where you can bang a frame against this cross piece to knock the bees off so they all land down inside which is very nice so this is a really well designed one but you can build one yourself um, it's only in the last couple of years I've had theirs I've always built my own and but theirs is much better design. Um, so now we're going to try and we're going to go through some hives. We're going to look for bees on brood that we can shake in here that doesn't have a queen on it. Because um, if we get a queen in here, they won't start any cells. We're also going to look for some nectar, some pollen, and when we get to the ones that we want genetically, if we want for our queens, we'll also start looking for the right age larva. So um, we'll try and find a two or three frames, at least two, of the right age larva so we can go graft. So that's, that's the plan. So we're going to just start hitting these uh, hives looking for, uh, looking for brood that we can shake up into here for nurse bees. Here, okay. Also might be able to steal something, maybe. I hate to set them back, but we got to steal things from someplace, so. Wow. Or roar. The way to keep the smoker lit, I don't have to pump it. excited this morning. Of course it is early, but still. Nothing on a racket. Mm. Okay, I have also nectar and pollen here. Let's see a clean. So here's some of my right age larva Put them on the other side. I'm going to set this over here.
I'm just going to leave them in here long enough to get them really uh, well soaked in uh, oil jelly. It'll make them easier to graft. And we shook a whole bunch of nurse bees in here. And the way we know that these are nurse bees is A, we shook them off of brood, and B, we allowed all the field bees to fly back home. So now they have no brood to feed except those two frames I just put in there. And I'm going to pull those out and graft from them in a minute. But, well, in an hour. Now we need to put this in the shade. We don't want it to overheat. Now, so now that we uh, shook all these nurse bees in here, we put some pollen, some nectar, some water in here. And I put two frames of brood in here that I'm going to graft. So now we gave them about an hour to get those all fed up so there'll be plenty of royal jelly in them. And now I'm going to take them out and we're going to go graft. So the nice thing about this design is this lid, as I slide it off, will just knock the bees down. If you build your own and you have a lid that just sits here, you're probably going to have to knock the bees down off the lid or you're going to have a pile of bees as you lift the lid. So I'm going to pull this out. Quite a pile of bees right there because of that. I don't remember which of these it is. I know this one is a larva, but then it's either that one or that one. I think it's that wooden one there. These uh, and like PF 120s are an eighth of an inch too short, so they always fall off the edge. And then the, and they're hard to get out unless you start from the right end. So this is the larva. And this is the larva. I needed to make some room so I get in here and I'm kind of that cross piece down there. I'm going to try and get the bees off of it and I'm going to knock these guys off. Knock these guys off. And I'm going to put the lid back on. Give these guys a the time while we graft to figure out that they're queenless. We'll take these back in the house. Now we're going to graft. You can see that this larva is all nice and wet. That's because we put it in there with all those nurse bees and uh, they had a chance to get everything all wet. They, they were all full of uh, bee milk and now they're feeding these bees. So these larvae are like way too big, but these larvae around the edges are about the right age. So we're going to try to graft these into these, and then we'll put those back in that cell starter. Now the Chinese grafting tool, you kind of go down the side of the cell and it hits the bottom and you kind of scoop it up. And you see, I get it with a lot of royal jelly. So it isn't just the larva, it's the larva and some royal jelly. Then when you set it in the bottom of the cup, you, you place this on the bottom and you push on it like this and then this pushes it off till it catches as soon as a little bit of it catches on the plastic you can kind of pull it out from under it without having to push it anymore so it does minimal damage to the larva I'm in the bottom and I push the plunger and I pull back as I push the plunger and there it is right in the bottom of the cell Sometimes you're trying to get it out and it'll stick to the side and then it's really tough to ever recover from that because odds are you'll end up with them upside down at best. Um, there's no guaranteed way to avoid it but as you get under the larva, if as you come up like this you back up just a little bit like this then, you, then you're less likely to bump the other side. If you bump the other side with the larva then the larva tends to stick because the other side's dry. The larva is wet and then it tends to stick to the side. This one requires kind of bigger larva. You sort of get in the middle of the larva and pick it up. So I'll pick one up here for you. So this one you just sort of get in the middle of it and pick it up like that.
jersey. Okay, so now we're going to put these cells we grafted in the cell starter. So hopefully these nurse bees will start a whole bunch of cells for us. The idea of splitting it into a starter and a finisher is that the stimulus to get them to start them is a little more critical than the stimulus to get them to finish them. Uh, getting them to start them is trickier in other words. So we got a box full of, of uh, queenless nurse bees who have no other brood than this to take care of. So we've got two frames of uh, ne nectar and a frame of pollen or so in here. Uh, some mixed up frames of pollen and nectar. We've got water on the bottom and we got a bunch of bees. So I'm going to put this in here for them to finish the cells. See when I uh, pull it back there's bees falling down in there because they're hanging on the top. You don't see that, you don't have enough bees. That's all right. I won't get all these in, but I'd like to get as many of them as I can back in, so I'll brush a few of those in. I'll get over to here and brush a few of these back in. Closing this up. Now the ones that didn't get in will probably hang on the outside here. That's going to do some good anyway. Now, since the sun's moved, now over about here, it's eventually going to get over there. I don't want to leave it here. It'll be in the sun when the sun gets over in the west. I'm going to put it back around in the north. Um, so that's how we set up a cell starter. Um, the next step will be to move them into the cell finisher, and we'll do that in another video.